You're listening to the Orange Power Podcast, a product of Oklahoma State Athletics. Here are your hosts, Jessica Mori and the voice of the Cowboys, Dave Hunziker. We start, as always, with Coach Gundy as we get ready for an upcoming game at West Virginia. And just going back to Kansas for a moment, I mean, you talked about it after the game, but he had one penalty, no turnovers. You know, when people say, well, Kansas is not necessarily the strongest team, but you talked about playing a perfect game. That's hard to do against air in practice, but it, it you made it sound like, and it looked like it was pretty close to perfect in a lot of ways. I evaluate games based on the way our players execute from an assignment standpoint, an effort, technique, and fundamental standpoint. And that varies based on who you play. And that's the only way, this way I believe it uh, is, this way I do it, let's put it that way. That I evaluate the coaches, I evaluate our game plans in all three phases. I evaluate our game day coaching, our sideline coaching, our players. I can tell if we're confused if we're playing as hard as we're supposed to be because we're not confused. And so it varies depending on who we play, but we've played teams that this year that weren't as athletic as Kansas. Mm -hmm. And it was all we could do to win the game. Right. So the, and I told the players this, they practiced well, the plans well, we started fast, things went well, and then that's what can happen in a game. But I was just pleased with the overall progress we've made. And like you and I were talking about earlier, I think that we are getting close to peaking as a football team. We're, we're pretty healthy right now, and we're, we're comfortable with what we're doing in all three phases. So that's really what the goal is for, for me as a head coach. Like, I can't just evaluate our organization on if we win every game, I'm happy. If we lose every game, I'm sad. That doesn't work that way. Or, or I'm not doing my job. So I have to be able to abide by the standard I mentioned earlier and look at things realistically. And we played a really good game last week. As you become healthier, we've seen, for the most part, a consistency in starting fast. That's happened maybe with an exception or two, obviously, mm -hmm. with Texas being one. But generally speaking, you've started quickly in, in just about all of your games, which says that the preparations going into the game must be on the mark. How much of the success of this team is just an overall really good sense of self-awareness. Coaches understanding players, players understanding themselves, just everything being in sync. Well, there's no question. And that, that's what people outside of our organization and maybe every high-level sports organization, basketball, NBA, NFL, whatever it may be, that – it's so important that everybody understands their responsibility. Everybody has a role to play. All the way from the head coach down to what would be the fourth team walk-on kicker. So we all have a role. Everybody has to buy in. We have to have a good feel about each other, do what's right. And it takes a lot of work for the organization to function on all cylinders. But when it does, it goes back to what we talked about earlier in this show, it allows us to go to the stadium on Saturday, home or away, and if we play well, we know we can win. That's all we can ask for because you can't ask for more and you don't want less. And so we have that at this time. Where we're at right now is when we go to the stadium, we know if we play well, we have a chance to win the game. And that excites the fans, that gets everything going, and it gives you good national exposure and helps you in recruiting, helps people feel good about football at Oklahoma State. Yeah. You had three touchdown passes of 20 yards or more in the first six games. Now you've had three in the last two games combined. Do you feel like you're making the type of progress that you would like to throwing the ball down the field? Yeah, we, we need two and a half a game, really. We need five every two games. And, you know, in years past, we had about four a game. Yeah. So – the four a game, Dave, is unrealistic because of the structure of defenses we're facing now. Sure. Uh, as you know, it's com completely different from what it was three years ago. So to hold ourselves to that standard is somewhat unrealistic. But we really need five in two games um, to, to get plays, to um, give ourselves a chance to score points without, without having to be so methodical in 11, 12, 
13, 14 play drives, which are extremely difficult in college football. Sure. It seems like as Spencer Sanders gets out and is able to run more, like in the Kansas game, mm -hmm. it all sort of feeds, it each feeds itself. The good passing feeds the running, but the running really seems to fuel his ability to throw the ball. Is that why you were so interested in what we've seen the last three or four weeks? There's been more pronounced design quarterback run for him, option, things of that nature. Is that part of just trying to kind of feed him to where he gets on one of his roles? Was that part of it? My personal opinion is he plays better when he's when he's running throughout the game. Okay. He's natural at it. He likes to do it. He's competitive. He's tough. He's not scared. He likes to be a part of the game in that area, in my opinion. And when I see him doing that, I think he's in the flow. His his overall organization of the offense, how he functions, his reads, everything he does, his throws are quicker. He likes to be involved in the game by running the football. West Virginia is coming off two good wins. They mm -hmm. won at TCU, then they beat Iowa State last week. What maybe has looked different the last two weeks compared to the first six for them? Offensively, their quarterback's playing considerably better now than what he was when we played him last year. The running back is a good player, number four. Lebby, I think, is his name. Letty Brown, yeah. He's a good player. He's a lot like our guy. Runs hard. Very seldom does he ever get stopped for no gain or get pushed backwards. And then they've got a couple skilled wideouts that are making plays. And I think they're really good up front on the offensive line. Defensively, they've backed up a little bit, in my opinion. And they're, they're doing more stunts, more twists, more directional calls up front to try to be disruptive in the running game because they backed off a little bit to try to defend more of the downfield throws. They were hurt some with downfield throws early in the season. Yeah. Your offensive line was banged up early. Now it's healthy. And one of the strengths you've talked about with your offensive line is their athleticism and speed. When you're facing a defense that stunts and does as much movement as West Virginia does, does that extra athleticism help out or does it matter much? It should, it, and hopefully it does. What? The one area that you're always concerned about is there's times they'll jump around blocks. Okay. Which is some defensive coaches would say that's unsound. But they do it sometimes because their down guys aren't huge. They're, they're the 275 guys. We've been playing against 300s and 310s and such. Their down guys are more um, agile and they're not as big and so that's why they're playing this type of football. They jump around blocks some, and, and that can be a concern. But it can also help you. I mean, you jump around a block, and we get the linebacker sealed, and we got a big gash. Yeah. Running backs on air to the safety. So it works both ways. Is it important to be patient? Just sure. knowing that, you know, they lead the league in tackles for loss, mm -hmm. I think top five in the country in that category. Right. Do you have to just understand they're going to win some, right? Sure. And they're a good defense, uh, particularly as of late. Yeah. They, uh, they've, they have a lot of tackles for loss. And so that, that allows them to be a, a better defense than what people might think. And so we have to be patient. In, it's, a, it's a high risk, in my opinion, uh, with what they do up front. Um, a lot of what we do in the secondary some. Yeah. And so you're going to get hit in the backfield some. And patience is important. Um, don't just get away from what you think is the best, the best concepts. Just stay with it. And hopefully you hit some of those creases and then make some plays. Final thought, I'll preface this by saying you've taken really good teams to Morgantown the last three times you've gone out there, so you've won three in a row. Mm -hmm. It is the longest trip. Is, is there any reason outside of just taking really good teams out there that you've won out there? Do yeah. you think you've managed the travel well? Is there anything that you've done that might be unique? Or well, no? we've had good teams. We've been lucky around here for, I don't know, 10, 12 years. So we've, we've taken good players. We take – mature young men out there. We take guys that understand culture and are, are able to um, put crowd noise and such aside. Um, you know, we leave early in the morning. I say early in the morning. We start early in the morning here and we leave at noonish to, to get out there because you lose an hour going. Right. And if you were to have any issues from a plane standpoint, which you could, um, you would like to say, okay, well, if I have something come up, I can, I can still get there by 7 or 8, not 11 or 12. Right. So we leave a little earlier. 
you have a bus ride when you get there from the airport. Uh, we, we fly in, we fly south, a uh, little south, southeast of Morgantown, and you're an hour away from where we're trying to get to. So you got a pretty good bus ride afterwards. Right, right. So we leave earlier, try to get there, let the guys get settled in. Dinner by 6, which is 5 here. So they stay on the same calendar. And, uh, and it's worked well for us. I think the, the main reason we play good out there is because we've had good players and we have a good culture and a good concept. Coming up, he was the star of the show in Boone Pickett Stadium during a timeout. Little Warren Clay and his brother Colin Clay, a Cowboy defensive lineman, will be with Jessica after this. It's time for Ask the Coach, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey, Coach Gundy, this is Mike. What is your favorite sport outside of football? It depends on the season. Like, once basketball gets to the uh, NCAA tournament or the playoffs, I'll watch some basketball. There's so many basketball games, I have a hard time watching that. Um, I'm a huge baseball guy, but I don't watch much of it till it gets to the playoffs. Um, now, I do like watching wrestling, um, and I like watching girls softball, you know, because it's a very fast-paced, entertaining game. Remember that mammogram you postponed? The colonoscopy? Your yearly physical? Now's the time to get it done. Mercy is ready with COVID-19 safety precautions in place at all hospitals and clinics. So let's take care of that achy hip, the follow-up with your specialist. Plan for your safe visit at mercy.net slash your safety. Go to mercy.net slash your safety. At Mercy, your life is our life's work. When we made the decision that we were gonna build the Durant Solar Farm, we had the idea of an anchor tenant and the first one that we thought about was the Choctaw Nation. It was a perfect fit for us whenever og &E approached us about this relationship and this idea. They reflect a lot of our same values. They're about growth of our communities. They're about growth of our state. They're trying to help us preserve Oklahoma, our heritage here in the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Academy Sports and Outdoors is your Nike headquarters. We are proud to offer the best and newest Nike apparel, footwear, and sports equipment. From football to baseball, basketball to soccer, and everything in between, Academy is your place for Nike. For back to school and back to the field, head to toe, your home for Nike is Academy Sports and Outdoors. There are a great many things that can be found on the road. The giant blue whale in central Oklahoma. Musicians in search of that perfect melody. You'll even discover the center of the universe. You'll find stories of lives led, challenges met, and men who raise pigeons. They're all out there waiting to be discovered. All you have to do is follow the road. Phillips 66. Live to the full. I wiped up a mess. Yeah, you... Where is the bus? Never mind, I found it! Welcome back, football fans. We'll see you in the fridge. Welcome back to the Orange Power Podcast. I'm Jessica Mori, and we have yet another very special guest, two very special guests with us today. If you were at the game on Saturday, you definitely recognize the young man to my right, Warren the Cowboy. Warren Clay joins us today along with his brother, Colin Clay, a junior here with Cowboy Football. Warren. Are you so excited to be on the podcast? Yes. <laughs> That's the kind of energy we need. All right. So first we have to talk about Saturday night. You got the microphone. You were the Pistol Pete partner of the game, and you just stole the show, the star of the game. What was that like for you? Uh, I kind of like how I did the OSU. What was it like when you were doing the OSU? Ow. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like when you got to yell OSU into the mic? Owie! <laughs> it's dead. Do you hit your head on the back of the chair? 
It happens. <laughs> what was that like when you got to take the microphone? Uh, I uh, had to scream loud. You did scream loud. What was, uh, when you heard the crowd cheer for you at the end, what was going through your mind? Pistol Pete. Pistol Pete? <laughs> Do you see Pistol Pete cheering for you? He was so excited. How cool was that? Good. What was it like getting to be out there with BB, the mini horse? Oh, uh, yeah. It was good. It was good? That was awesome. You got to do that. And then you got to get on social media, and everyone was talking about you. And now you have 1,300 Instagram followers starting from Saturday when the account was made. What is it like to know that, that all the Cowboy fans, Pistol Pete, everybody, the whole team, Coach Gundy, everybody loves you, Warren? What's that like? Feel is good. Feel good? Why do you love the Oklahoma State Cowboys? Because they always make me happy. That is a great answer. I think they always make a lot of people happy. Right. <laughs> All right, your brother Colin is here with us. Colin, what was going through your mind? You knew he was going to be the Pistol Pete partner of the game. What was going through your mind when he got that microphone from Les? Well, I could just say right now, I feel like I can't even be in the same room as him anymore. He's so <laughs> popular. But um, I was at the game, and I was sitting there uh, talking to the D-line, and I look at the video board, and I see Warren there. And I'm like, I just don't know what's about to happen. Like, he had his pistols up, and he was just stuck there. And I was like, Warren, you got this. And so when he yelled, like, I just, like, felt completely different. I just got chills, and I was hyped for him. So, I mean, I love how everybody's showing him love, and I'm glad that he can have the opportunity to be able to do that. What was it like? What was the reaction from the team when that happened? I mean, the whole stadium erupted, but what was it like from your viewpoint on the bench? So when I was cheering, everybody was just looking at me like, oh, what is he cheering for? And so, like, I turned around like, yeah, that's my brother. Like, you can't tell me anything. So <laughs> that's about the time that everybody found out that that was my little brother. <laughs> when what were they, you know, normally, um, you know, the Pistol P partner of the game yells, go Pokes. Mm -hmm. But he changed it up with the OSU. So what was, were you, did you know he was going to do that? Or did you know that he was going to yell that loud? Uh, I knew he was going to do that. I just didn't know he was going to yell it that loud. I mean, he was sitting there, you know, he looked laid back. So I'm like, I mean, anything could happen. He's Warren. Uh, he's very uh, USA. You never know what he'll do. So when he yelled that, I was like shocked myself. My eyes got big, but I mean, I was excited for him. So. And it was a big win for the Cowboys, 55-3 to over Kansas, a homecoming win. Mm. But... What everyone was talking about after the game and, and even now is Warren. Right. What is that like walking around and, and people coming up to you and asking about Warren and then just people you don't even know or maybe don't even know that he's related to you just talking about the little kid that, that was at the game that yelled OSU. Well, I mean, I know people love little kids all the time. I mean, you walk around campus, I even will, and I see, like, little kids. So it's good to see it. But when I can wake up every morning and hear, like, yeah, that's my little brother. He's doing big things at four years old. So, I mean, he has a lot of years in front of him, and I can only imagine what he'll be like when he gets my age. <laughs> and uh, do you think, Warren, you want to be Pistol Pete when you grow up? Yeah? Do you think you make a good Pistol Pete? Did you know that, that the head that Pistol Pete wears, it weighs 40 pounds? Is that crazy? <laughs> can you lift 40 pounds? You can lift 40 pounds? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. You know what? I believe you. I believe that you can lift 40 pounds. Um, I think that'd be awesome if you are, uh, you know, a Pistol Pete in a few years down the road here at Oklahoma State. Or you could be the next Les. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that something you'd want to do? Do you want to take the mic and just and yell to the fans all the time? Yes. Yeah? That would be awesome. What would you think about that if you knew, you know, a couple years down the road uh, he could be... You know, the next Les, you could follow in Les's footsteps, or he could be a Pistol Pete here. Hey, I'll take whatever he wants to do. I mean, <laughs> if he wants to be the next Pistol Pete, I'll be there for him. If he wants to be on the mic, I can help him. So, I mean, I want to be a coach in my future. So it's working now on my just being a leader and being able to just talk to people. So, I mean, being a coach in the future, I can help him with that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, do you think if you tried to yell the OSU, would you have done it the same way? Like if it was you, if you were the Pistol Pete partner of the game? I don't think I would have had that much energy as he had. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I mean, he got so much more energy than I do. So, <laughs> yeah. One of the coolest things was after the game, uh, the content team here at Oklahoma State Football, they put out uh, end of 
game graphics with mm. the final score on social media. And normally, you know, it's it's a player or it's Bullet or it's Pistol Pete. But this time it was Warren. It was you. You were screaming. You had your guns up. You were ready to go. Your pistols were firing. Um, what did you get to see that picture and, and get to see that that was a graphic? What, what did you think about that? It was good. It was good? Yeah. Could you believe it? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> What, what's it been like the past couple days, everyone talking about you? What's that been like? Uh, it feels like my head. It feels like what? It feels in my head. It feels in your head? <laughs> Do you feel famous? Do you think you're famous? Yeah? <laughs> if you weren't famous before, you're definitely going to be famous after this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite part? Uh, about Pistol Pete. It was Pistol Pete? That was awesome. Um, you know, when he was growing up, he's only four, so right. very young, uh, which no one believes that. Everyone thinks that you're older. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Do you think you act older? I don't know. You don't know? You're an old soul, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, did you does he just have all this personality all the time, or is it kind of you know whenever he wants to turn it on, he can do it, or is he just always like this? Yeah, so I have two other brothers, uh, one's older than me, and then there's a younger one. I feel like that he has like each of our own personalities. When he's laid back, I feel like he has me because I'm more the laid back brother. My little brother Josh, he has like all the energy in the world. He's goofy, he's funny, and he's random. And so when he did that chant, I felt like that was like his goofy random side because. When he's laid back, he's just laid back. Kind of like right now, he's laid back. So I feel like that's kind of how I am. But then my oldest brother, like he is one of one, I could say. Like he, you'll never know what comes from him at all. So he, he'll be sitting there and he'll just yell something. He could sit somewhere f quiet for however long and then he'll just yell something, even if it's an OSU chant. So I feel like he has each of our own traits and personality. So yeah, that's, um, I think that as I watch him grow up, like, I just see him continue to mature, which is rare for a four-year-old. I mean, he does a lot at four years old, and he's very goofy at four years old. So I feel like when we're all around him, like, he just picked up on whatever we had, and that's just how he is now. Yeah. I don't think anyone believes you're four. That's so cool. At least I thought you were at least six or seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, me too. <laughs> um, what was it like getting to be on the field? Uh, it was good. Did you get to see, you get to watch the game from a field for a little bit? Yeah. Are you a big football fan? Yes. Okay, talk to me about football. Why do you like football? Because I always say go Pokes. You do always say go Pokes and OSU. Um, what makes, you know, uh, Les was telling me that whenever you went down on the field before you did the chant, you wanted to make sure you were watching the game. You didn't want to miss any part of the game because you care so much about OSU football and you wanted to watch the game. Is that is that true? Yes. You just wanted to watch the game. Was it cool getting to see it from the field level? Because normally you're in the stands. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. What was your favorite part about watching the game down there? Uh, about... I don't remember. You don't remember? <laughs> there was a lot going on. There was a lot going on. So if you got to be, if you got to do a chant again, would you do the OSU again or would you do Go Pokes? What would you do? OSU. OSU? Okay. Do you practice, did you practice that? I think so. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> um, if you got to do it again, would you practice a lot before you got to go out there? Yes. Would you want to do the chant again at a game? Yes. Yeah, I think the fans would love that. What was, uh, what's it like, you know, knowing that you're a celebrity now for Cowboy fans when you go out there? I mean, you're as famous as Pistol Pete right now. Uh, uh, I like how they just scores. You like how they score? They did score a lot in that game. That was awesome. <laughs> Hopefully they score a lot yeah. more, uh, you know, for the rest of the season. So are you going to be at, at the rest of the games? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be taking pictures with people? What if someone comes up and asks for a picture with you? You're going to say, yeah? Yes. Yeah? Do you like when people come up and do that? <laughs> All right, so OSU fans, if you're at the game against TCU, are you going to be at that one? If you're at the game against TCU um, or at Bedlam, you guys got to come up and find Warren and get pictures with him because this guy's going to be, he's going to be famous. He will be. Are you going to be famous? 
Yes. Yeah, he knows. He's <laughs> going to be famous. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Warren. And thank you so much for joining me, Colin, for as me. well. So before we go, we got to do the OSU chant, all right? I want you to look at this camera that's right over here. And are you ready? You got to do the OSU. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Three, two, one. Let's go. That was awesome. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching this week's Orange Power Podcast. We'll be right back here next week. <laughs>